This is the problem. Mm-hmm. 99% of things we agree on, especially yeah. on books and stories and whatnot. Not, it's a terrible, terrible pitch for a podcast. Like two guys yeah. that generally agree go face to face with two microphones. Yeah, we need like a uh, need like our friend John or something on here. No, the problem with John is dumb. Yeah, you said it first. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Tudor Ramble, episode 32. Introducing myself, Austin, and co-host... You're so weird. <laughs> My name's Richard. Like, if the podcast thing kind of falls through, I figured I could be, like, a commentator, get some... W- like, Logan Paul's going into WWE. I you're, could get into WWE. You're always something new, and it's always weird every time you do it. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> this is an exciting episode because I, I love doing these where you have read a book series and yeah. I, who can't read, have not read the book series. So I'm excited about this because it's another one of those where you get to pitch it to me and the audience. So this yeah. will be completely spoiler free on Lightbringer. Yeah. Yes. I'm excited to talk about it because this is a unique thing to talk about and my pitch will be unique a little different than other pitch i like unique pitches that i have done i like unique now right just before we get into the pitch wanted to mention to our audience very briefly and get a feel out there that richard and i were thinking of making a patreon where we would have a private discord we could do watch parties with people uh, what else were we were thinking of doing oh book, 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 book club book club uh, watch we parties have, and... stuff like that we just want to feel the room we know other booktubers do that and if we want to get more serious and start doing this more full-time or at least more more than we're currently doing mm-hmm. uh we wanted to feel the room see if anyone would okay yeah so uh, i know wraith gaming uh, i know you're watch watching or listening wraith games he, og yeah he, he's gonna be there I, I know he'll be there exactly it'll yes. be a party <laughs> not our parents our parents won't sign up no we pay, them to, we pay them to watch the videos, <laughs> specifically. And it's like, my, my, I owe my mother $20. I'm like, Mom, did you watch that? La- okay, here you go. I'll send you the bucks. Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> so we got, uh, yeah, get that out of the way. If anyone is remotely interested, let us know. And let us know if our ideas also suck for that. No. But moving on, let's get into Lightbringer. So the idea of this video, our pitch reviews is, yeah. I've read something, you, maybe the, maybe the watcher, the viewer has not, and I will be giving a spoiler-free pitch to... Uh, See if you should read it or not. Let's, yes. Let's see how good of a job I do. Let's see this. Now, for this series, this is the author Brent Weeks, correct? Yep. What do you know about Brent Weeks? Is this his magnum opus? Is this his best series? Who is this guy? This is his uh, second series. The first one, it was the Night Angel trilogy. I have not actually gotten to reading it, but generally, uh, most people consider Lightbringer significantly better than Night Angel. Okay. So this is this is his this is what you should read if you're into Brent Weeks. And yeah. if you want to read Brent Weeks' best work, it's Lightbringer. Yes. Got it. And mentioning Night Angel, that's the other series he has? It's his uh, first trilogy. First trilogy. Uh, it's what he first wrote, and, but I believe 2023 he's coming out with a continuation. Okay. Yeah. Got it, got it. So Brent Weeks, and now let's get into the good stuff, Lightbringer. What's the overall summary of this book? What's the overall pitch? So this is a... Uh, Flintlock fantasy, which, if you don't know, is typically fan- fantasy magic mixed with gunpowder, um, typically not uh, semi-automatic or automatic uh, rifles, but muskets and flintlock kind We're of getting stuff. getting some, like, yeah. Thomas Jefferson-type Think ben Civil Franklin War colonial. Uh, abilities with firearms. Post-colonial. We're talking Civil War. Yeah. So, okay. it's pre-industrial, but they use guns, lifts, pulleys, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, the series is about the main character, Kip, who is, because of his uh, unknown parentage, he's thrown into the, uh, the capital city of this world and is flung from his kind of humble, humble, poor village to the, the big city. But with that comes a lot of political movering. Uh, moving about, um, so many different people want to pull him in different directions, and his allies may not really be his allies. Who, who has it best out for him? And all this going down with the, the nationwide religion, B- 
being just filled with dark corruption and genuine malice where the antagonist of the story kind of has a point they want to overthink the antagonist wants to overthrow the country and they kind of have a point not a complete point but they got a point so it's definitely morally gray and very interesting where characters line up and so one leads to wonderful drama awesome uh genre i would consider this series um dark adventure uh fantasy thriller dark adventure fantasy thriller yeah that's that's where i would put this in the genre wise got it got are there similar books that people could pinpoint out there so if they've read a series should they then read lightbringer i mean it's it's pretty up there with just if you like modern fantasy it's pretty ubiquitous it's not filling any niche uh i would say what it does best is subverting your expectations while still staying in the genre of modern fantasy but i mean if you've read powder mage trilogy if you've read uh lacanus trilogy uh there's some similar aspects to both of those series okay so we're talking this subverts your expectations and does it do that well how does it do that oh it does it great because some books like the pariah i think we both thought this it subverts your expectations every single time and so subverting expectations becomes your expectations yeah yeah (laughs) but this book uh this book series does a great job of mixing what you would kind of standard to think about what would happen versus and also mix in some great twists so this has a lot of plot twists exactly but they actually hit they land are we talking game of thrones level oh definitely there's some big there's some big twists characters are not you know characters are at risk they they can easily die there's Characters go in completely different directions the way you're ever thinking. And it, it is a ride, especially. Like, Damn. A couple of the cliffhangers from the books, uh, like I, I'm mainly thinking like book two cliffhanger was, oof. Oh, God, I couldn't read book three fast enough. Okay. So <laughs> I, I even remember some specific uh, twists very vividly. That's some high praise. Okay. Yeah. You're saying, now, have you, re- have you read Game of Thrones? I have... Okay. Not read it, but I know all the twists because everyone keeps talking to me about it. Fair. I've seen all the clips on Game of Thrones, the show. I know. Okay. I okay. generally okay. know. I, for some reason, I've watched so many YouTube videos about Game of Thrones. I've just never read Game of Thrones. Never even watched an episode. At this point, I'm spoiled so much that it's not even worth for me to read it. So you came to something like Lightbringer that has a ton <laughs> of great twists that you had no information about. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that... A better well, way to introduce yourself. Big to question twists. then is, mm-hmm. what is the Richard Rambler score? What is your out of 10 rating for okay. the five book? Because there's five books in this series, correct? Five books. The five book saga of Lightbringer. What is your rating? Overall, I give the series a 7.68 out of 10. 7.68. We are going to get so made fun of because it's to the nearest hundreds again. But I respect <laughs> it every damn time you give me that. I, I honestly lose a little respect when you don't go to the nearest thousandth. You know, I, I just, I do, ev- I, all my scores are to the 0.25. See, could, and then, you know, when they average together, you get the weird score. Exactly. And could you have rounded that to 7.7? Yes. No, of course not. No, you I could, can't do that. You could have, but you would have been incorrect. Exactly. So that's the problem. So mm-hmm. you have to be precise. And I love <laughs> it. So 7.68 out of 10 for the series. Can I ask you a little bit more uh, specific question here? Yeah. Which book raised that rating and which book lowered that rating so i think by far the best book is the third book in the series and like the third book honestly blew me away Uh, i gave the third book a 8.8 so very high score some i mean i gave the plot a 9.5 like holy crap it's real good a richard 9.5 it's real the plot's real a good Richard nine, that's like a rotten tomatoes 200 <laughs> percent. i know the plot breaks the scale <laughs> oh yeah no there's some great aspects to it so plenty great okay the worst book of the series for me is the last one and i gave that one a five out of ten the last book yeah so you, from your perspective, the series, especially the first four, four books, are all great to fantastic, and then the fifth dips in quality. Yeah. Which, would you say then to people listening, people watching, that you'd still recommend the series, although 
the ending wasn't as satisfying for you? There's so much great stuff to take away from the series that, yes, I would still say read it. It's, okay. I think, almost required reading for modern fantasy, mainly due to its pacing, its action, and characters. And okay. actually even better, the magic system. All these aspects are fantastic works. And in all honesty, the seri- like most people online are kind of split on the ending. So just because I didn't like the direction the ending went doesn't mean you won't. You will. Like I know me you, personally. You'll agree with me. But you know So I will hate the ending. Viewers. Yes. View- you specifically viewers will, will be split. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I'm saying that this is kind of unique, is it's one of those series like I didn't really like the ending, but damn the ride was so fun. Like just the ride to get there was so great that it's worth it. It kind of makes it more interesting to me to read. The fact that yeah. I want to see why you didn't like the ending. I know. I want to discuss it with you, too. And like, I, ca- I'm, I am shackled to spoiler-free discussion. Lovely. And there's so much I want to talk about, but I will limit myself. Do you think I think the same, that the journey is better than the destination for this book? I don't know. I've heard you talk about Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, an oh, ending do I. doesn't... like. An ending ruins things for oh, you, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a good point. But for you, for this being, this is a five book series. So yeah. it, when does it, when does the fifth book dip for you? Oh, I mean, the fifth book only dips in the last third. Or okay, so last it's, half, it's really just something a like bit. that. Yeah. Okay. And no, since, since conclusions. You, you are weird, mm-hmm. admittedly, like I, these aren't my words, these are your words. Okay? Yeah, I'm that's just, fair. I'm using your linguistics, your language here. Mm-hmm. So you could be the odd one out. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm notoriously hard to please with literature. Clearly, with us, you know, being real anal about uh, seven point six eight. So, I'm giving lots of praise and my criticism. Well, honestly, read it and find out for yourself. Your recommendation is read it. Oh yeah. Okay. Whether here's here's the thing. Worst case scenario, you agree with me and you don't like the ending. Four at four and a half books are so great and some of the best action that you're gonna get out of fantasy. Some of the best magic systems and honestly the character journeys throughout them are some of the most unique that you're gonna find in fantasy now. That was a brilliant way to put it, by the way. They, yeah. the worst case scenario, you're getting four and a half fantastic books from your perspective. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So awesome, awesome. I I still recommend it. Great. So can you briefly go on this then? Mm-hmm. You said the third book was your favorite? That, yeah, that, definitely. The reason that's odd to me is typically when you have these long series, you get middle book syndrome mm-hmm. or middle syndrome where the beginning's really exciting. You're setting up all these characters and the endings, well, and instead of for this case, is usually very satisfying and you get this great, you know, everything's finishing. It's being climactic. And the middle mm-hmm. book usually struggles to get anywhere because it's kind of lulling in the story. But for this series, the third book was your absolute favorite. Yeah, because it it had a, an equal amount of great payoff from the first two books, but also great setup. It had, I think, the most twists and turns I didn't see coming. Okay. It changed the direction of the whole series, where you think it's all going one way, and, well, the entire series is a new direction now. Got it. Okay. The characters go on really unexpected journeys for it. Um, the character work is definitely the best in the third book. I, okay. I was really riveted to, especially between our main character and I personally think the best pro like antagonist in the series, and one of my favorite antagonists in fiction, like damn until the last book, like it's, seriously. <laughs> Can you stop? Can you stop being mean? <laughs> like, For <seriously>. one second, <laughs> it's one of those things. Like oh my god, like okay, you know if you've read the series. You know the person I'm talking about. And yeah, he's such a great villain. It, like, he's a great antagonist. And oh, it's okay. a joy. A joy to watch him and the main character kind of spar. It's well, wonderful. I'm excited to get into your specifics about this book. Mm-hmm. And can I, can I touch on Let's touch on this first. Yeah. Because you, you mentioned this earlier, and I want you to expand on it. The magic building slash world building. or Sorry, magic system slash world building of Lightbringer. Yeah. How is that? Gotcha. Well, I'll I'll set it up for you. The magic system is based on Oh, I'm I'm I keep getting the name of this thing wrong and it hurt. Uh 
Cro- uh, chroma, chroma, chromaturgy. 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 I think. You, I don't know how to pronounce that. That sounds like jargon. What I is know. that? I never had to pronounce things. I just read it and it goes in my brain. What do you like, say oh, in your head? I just look at the word and I know it. I don't say it in my head because I don't know how to pronounce it. Fair, okay. <laughs> have you, I mean, have you ever had those words? Like, you don't know how to pronounce it, but you recognize it. So it's no problem. That's, I don't read. <laughs> I, that, I avoid that by just not read. You you pitch these books. Yeah, you pitch these books to me. I'm like, oh yeah, I basically read it. Right? You gave me the you gave me the re, uh, the spoiler free review. I read yeah. the book now. <laughs> wait, wait. This uh, obviously by the title Lightbringer, it's based on light. So there are some individuals that are able to absorb certain uh, colors of light, and if they can absorb that color, they can draft or create. Mm-hmm. This substance called Luxon, and that's way easier to pronounce. Yes. You should have just said Luxon stuff. I, I should have said that one. But depending on what light you can absorb, and creates a different color of Luxon, which has each of them have different properties. Now the kind of twist on this is, at the more you use this magic, it you, the color of your eyes start uh, changing, and if the color breaks from the center of your eye to the white of your eye. It's uh, called, like, your halo breaks. And at that point, the main church of this um, country kills you. And, or you or volunteer yourself basically to suicide. Ooh. So if you use your powers too much, you have to kill yourself. And it means the people that can use these powers typically have very short lifespans if they're using it a lot. Oh, I love Sears these gets yeah. Sears gets dark and constantly this looming threat of a heavy battle where you know our main character's going through this big battle and then you just kind of hey people win the day or they lose the day no matter what all the people fighting really push themselves a lot closer to death. Oof. I I love costs and limitations in my magic. Oh, it's great. That that hooked me right there. Oh, yeah. Love that. So the yeah. Mac yeah. system is fantastic. And the creative uses of using different, um, using the different uh, functions or properties of Luxon mm-hmm. combined together to create all these magnificent machines and different use tools for it. Fantastic work. So you have both people who are magically powerful they have a lot of magic to use and so that's why they're powerful but you also have individuals who don't have a lot of power but have a lot of tact and skill and so you see them almost equally as effective in fights or in any kind of use setting because of their skill with it so they both have there's both power and skill that can kind of go head to head in this area so it makes fights very unique and kind of always on your toes of who's going to win and you're saying of the four genres, action's one of those. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, action's cool. fantastic. What did you say? The world building's just as good as the magic system? Mm, there's some certain aspects of world building that okay. are really good. Um, I would say, again, up until the fifth book. <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, the country's religion is definitely one of the best fantasy religions it has a lot of cost and you can also see why it was set up Uh it it, a lot of it has consequence i think that's the most important thing it's not just oh it's the fantasy religion no there's some genuine reasons why they think the way they do why they're why these actions you see where myth and legend turns to actual um ritual Okay, and I so follow, that, that's I really follow, yeah. that's really cool to see, and how would the magic system even affect religion and God? So the world got you. Yeah, the world magic, you're on board. Yeah, until, you know, you get all picky yeah. at the end. But well, there's yeah. there's some aspects of like larger countries, like beyond the mm-hmm. where we're setting, um, history as well. Maybe not as fleshed out as some of my favorite fantasy genres, but magic system and the religion in the fantasy fantastically done what about characters how are the characters in this world how do the characters perform for you do they meet the richard standard first four books most definitely okay i keep having to say that first four books Uh, 
But no, they are some of the most unique characters in fantasy. Uh, I've... Whoa, oh, most yeah. unique characters in fantasy. Definitely. Damn. They break, uh, they break a lot of genres without... Uh, they break a lot of tropes without seeming like a... Haha, got you. Oh, look, he's so different. Um, kind of like with um, Pariah. Pariah was kind of like that, where um, quite a few characters in that uh, book felt like they were the way they were just because the author wanted to do some, like do the opposite of the trope. Mm. This series, they're far more unique. Like I think one of my favorite characters in the whole series is the antagonist, like the main series antagonist is definitely one of the best, and not because he's just so mustache twirling or not because he's a misunderstood uh, gray anti-hero or anything like that. He's an antagonist. Pretty bad person overall, but you see where he's coming from, and it's so interesting to see him work. And so, enjoyed him a lot. The main character, Kip, I thought was unique because he starts out as, like, he's a fat boy from poor, poor town. And I thought reading the first book going, oh, well, this is a fantasy series. You know, the main character is going to go through a training arc of some type and get fit and all that stuff and become strong. No, he's a fat boy. And it it's hard to lose weight when you're that fat and round. And that stays with him a lot. It's a significant hurdle. He doesn't just, these challenges to him are not just easily explained away. He genuinely has to challenge them and they are hard nothing comes easy to him and to what i really much enjoy about their characters awesome okay mm -hmm. okay except one and there's uh people who've read it i think everyone kind of agrees there's one character that was a real letdown but, oh if, yeah. uh, okay i won't ask who i won't ask who because... honestly but ever that's a that's a general agreement there's one character that was real disappointment Got but it. that's one out of however many characters so mm. It's fine. Okay, so characters solid as well. What about the uh, what about the plot? How's that general structure? Is it paced well? Absolutely fantastic. Uh, pacing is perfect, perfect pacing. Perfect in what way? It accomplishes both character work and you know the plot moving forward at the same time, as well as giving you great action. It gives you everything all at once. It knows when to slow down to have some good character moments. But never slows down too long. It always keeps keeps you wanting more. Yeah. You always want to turn to the next page. Oh, okay. That's high praise. Yeah. Very I praise. actually gave the third book uh, for plot a 9.5. Yeah, 9.5 is a ridiculous Richard score. I mean, that is, yeah. that is unbelievable. Now, I gave the fifth plot, the fifth book's plot a 3.25. That's egregious. That's, <laughs> I haven't read the book, and I'm offended. My name is not Brent Weeks, but temporarily I will vicariously... But whatever the word is, I'm him for a moment. It's I don't know how uncalled one, for. I, I don't know how one does that. Like I, I genuinely was like, yeah. The more I think about it, like oof. wow, three point two five. Okay, yeah, we'll, no, we'll, I, we'll I, shrub over that. I'm, okay. I'm just saying, you would hate the plot in the fifth book. Hate with a don't passion. Don't you dare, Nostradamus. My opinions. You're so. <laughs> you're probably so right. And yeah. th this is the problem. Mm -hmm. Ninety nine percent of things we agree on especially yeah. on books and stories and whatnot. Not, it's a terrible, terrible pitch for a podcast. Like, two guys yeah. that generally agree go face-to-face <laughs> -face with two microphones. Yeah, we need, like, uh, need like our friend John or something on here. No, the problem with John is... Dumb? Yeah, you said it first. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Even when I agree with him, I just... I don't, I don't agree with how he got oh, to his You know, he watches these podcasts. Well, I'm not afraid, you know, like, John, you're dumb most of the time. <laughs> Even when we agree, it's for the wrong reasons. Oh, my God, we need a special guest appearance with him now. Oh, yeah. This would be great. <laughs> we'll, we'll fly him in here. Oh, God. We don't have flying in money. What am I saying? <laughs> Patreon coming soon. <laughs> All right. We got, we got uh, Spirit Airlines money. <laughs> oh, not even that. Come on. Spirit, Spirit's not bad sometimes. You get a nice, cheap flight. I wish we had East Spirit Coast. Airlines money. <laughs> Europe, Ryanair. Ryanair's goaded. We do have Ryanair money. We're I rambling can... too much. Hold on. Lightbringer. Lightbringer. <laughs> I, I got to stop this. I got to stop. This. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where, where were we? We were talking on uh, plot. Pacing. Pacing, great. Pacing we, is perfect. We went magic I, system. I, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if you appreciate this. Mm -hmm. 
I say perfect. There's not a single moment in the first four books where it dragged. That's ridiculous. Not one. Every chapter is meaningful. Almost every chapter ends with something of, I got to know what's next. Damn. At... I cannot wait to pick up the four <laughs> books in this in this saga. <laughs> I'm gonna pick stop. all four of them. I'm gonna munch them up, and then the fifth one, eh, whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> you think is you'll read the fourth book and you'll have to read the fifth. Oh damn you! I, I'm damn just saying you. you're gonna have to. Like it's okay. gonna drag you in. All right, all right. So magic system role playing great. Characters great. We've got plot paced perfectly. Yeah, perfect. You don't use the word perfect a lot. Yeah, I will. The say only perfect. time I've heard you use the word perfect is saying our friendship. And when you've said qualities about me. Well, I've said it was not perfect. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. you said perfect, but it was just, it's not, it's not perfect. It's actually the opposite of perfect. Yeah, exactly. So fourth category, then. Mm-hmm. What did you think about the dialogue? His prose. How is it? It's significantly above average. The, uh, I would say dialogue between characters is some of the best. It's up okay. there in fantasy, so... Um, description, I guess, is not as, it's not as forte, it's not as big deal, so that but that's typical with modern fantasy. I would like more description of the world and setting and all that, but you know, that's just not the not the world that yeah. fantasy is in now. Um by far his best the best part of his writing is his action scenes. He writes action just so energetically and surprising. It it is so great. Such great action. Uh, all the fight scenes are really, I would say, if you want to, like, what's the one thing that people should read the series for? The action. Okay. Action. Like, if, if you're an aspiring writer out there and you want to write action and fantasy, you should look to Brent Weeks. Like, I think kind of two. There's two series that do, eh, three. Three series that do uh, action and fantasy just fantastically. It's Brent Weeks. It's Evan Winters for um, the Rage of Dragons, and lastly, John Gwen. Those three. And it's Shadow of the Gods, that series. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be honest, I think Brent Weeks is the best. For action. For action. Holy crap, okay. Yeah. So Brent just Weeks, how to write an action scene. Fantastic. It probably helps that his magic system just cool as hell. So yeah. you, with that magic system that you love and his prose, just beauty. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now... There are there are aspects like is it as like um I was saying like description but the in between moments uh between action and intense dialogue drama I'd say it's fine it's, it's typical standard fantasy so that's why I'm not giving like you know nine or ten ten out of ten here so got it got it there are certain aspects that he's definitely far above par and there's some that he's about par. Okay. All, all in all, then, people should read this book. Definitely. Even my like mixed opinion on the fifth book, Yeah, I like the rest of the series so much that it's worth it. Like, Let's say worst case scenario that you agree with me that you didn't like the fifth book. You still read four and a half great books. Yeah, that, it is a huge was, journey. That was the best thing you said all video, I think. Like saying yeah. that four and a half fantastic books, that's a great pitch. It's like yeah. you're using the uh, Pascal's wager, essentially, <laughs> just put it in the books. That's that's yeah. a great pitch. That you'll at least love four and a half of them, even if they, even if they agree with you. Exactly. At worst, they love it. Yeah. Exactly. At worst, at best, they really love it. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Fantastic. Okay. Any? <laughs> did I did I interrupt you in anything? Do you have anything else you want to throw in on lightning or sorry, Lightbringer before we come to a close? Yeah, th- there's nothing else I can really talk about further without heavy spoilers. And honestly, a spoiler discussion on this book could be like two hours. We would get into serious discussions on uh, certain literary tropes, and it would get very interesting. Uh, uh, it's It would be long discussion. People that have read Lightbringer, let us know if you agree with Richard's opinion on the ending. I'm curious because... You know, before I get into I'll this answer series, comments actually. so he doesn't get spoiled. Yeah, I, I won't we'll look at best. these comments. So, <laughs> okay, this this has been a fun one. You excited me for the book in many ways. I'm glad in I did. many many ways. Well, you have so many other things to get through, and you still haven't gotten to the wheel of time yet. That's first, first and foremost. But that, <laughs> then a, after that, 
<laughs> after that. <laughs> after Read that. This. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll be signing off today, and we'll see you guys next week. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.